chemicals, in particular the risks associated with them and the reactions of them, uh, particularly oxygen and water. So let's start off with what is meant by group one metal. This is the periodic table, and sometimes you'll see that hydrogen is at the top of group one. It is not a group one metal, just ignore it. The group one metals are here, lithium to francium. Um, a couple of bits just bear in mind, because they're in group one, they have one outer electron, We'll go into why it's important. And secondly, as you go down the group, as with the whole periodic table, as you go down uh, each group, they get bigger, which means the outer electron is further from the nucleus. Now, these are very, very active metals. When you store these, they have to be stored in oil because they'll react with oxygen in the air. Even though they are stored in oil, they still react within the oxygen that's available. So when you take them out, and you have to take them out with tweezers, when you take them out, they look like a white, dullish colour. However, if you get a knife, and you can use just a table knife to do this because they're very, very soft, you just cut straight through and in the inside there will be silver. Because what's happened is the metal on the outside has oxidised and formed the oxide of that metal. So for example, lithium will form lithium oxide. The formula for lithium oxide is Li2O, the reason being that lithium is in group 1, so it has a 1 plus charge. Oxygen is in group 6, so it has a 2 minus charge. So I need 2 plus 1s to balance out the minus 2 from the oxygen. So it's Li2O. Um, there are a couple of safety precautions as well. So we do store it in oil so it doesn't react with the oxygen. You do need to use tweezers to deal with it because if it touches the water on your fingers, and you should wear gloves too, it will burn your fingers because it will react with the water on your fingers. The same for your eyes, you need to wear goggles. Um, you would need to do this particular practical of reacting it with water behind a safety screen uh, so that nothing comes back and uh, hits you in the face or on the body. Um, and in addition to that, you also need to make sure it's in a well-ventilated room because it will produce lots of uh, hydrogen, which is quite explosive. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is when you do this practical, you only should use a grain of rice, so a bit of metal the size of a grain of rice, <clears throat> because what will happen is if you use more, the, ox the hydrogen will be produced much faster and you'll get a more violent reaction. Now, as we go down the periodic table, if we have a look here, you've got lithium. Now, lithium is... If you add lithium to water, it will fizz around on the surface. That fizzing is caused by the bubbles from the hydrogen. Um, it will float on the surface. It will turn the uh, water alkali, which is why they're called alkali metals, because it will form lithium hydroxide. Um, and we'll look at that particular reaction in a minute. And as a result, it, and it, it will form a little flame. However, sodium, if the, part, if the part, bit of sodium is big enough, will form a little yellow flame. It will do the same, it will fizz, it will move around the surface, it will make the water alkaline. Um, however, it will do this faster. Uh, the same thing goes on to potassium. So potassium will form a larger purple flame. It will move faster, it will fizz faster. And as we go down the period table, you'll see it gets more aggressive or more violent, the reaction because the metal is more reactive. We then get to rubidium, and rubidium causes such a rapid production of hydrogen gas that it causes an explosion. Same with cesium. Cesium is even more violent than rubidium. Francium at the bottom is radioactive, so it doesn't quite do that. Why does this happen? So, uh, here I've got two atoms. This is lithium here, and this is potassium he uh, here. Now, what you'll see is potassium has got more protons in the nucleus than lithium. It's a bigger atom, and that's the key bit, because all of these reactions are going to be caused because this electron here and this electron here are lost. So how easy it is to remove that electron determines how reactive it is. So as I said earlier, as you go down the group, the atom gets bigger, so the distance is further from the nucleus. The further it is from the nucleus, the easier it is to remove the outer electron. Okay, So your reaction would be... And this is the half equation for this, and you'll, there'll be a video on half equations that you can use. Uh, lithium, which is a solid in this case, will turn into a lithium plus ion, which is aqueous plus an electron. So it loses that outer electron and forms a lithium ion from a solid bit of lithium. 
the best way of thinking about this that I've come with is kind of like the rides at a theme park. Assuming everyone likes the big rides, the big roller coasters, this is the more attractive roller coaster. This is like the teacups. However, the queue for the roller coaster is massive. You are very, very far away from the actual ride. However, you only have two people waiting between you and the uh, teacups. So you are more likely to leave this queue than you are to leave this queue. And it's the same thing with the electrons. So just have a quick look at the actual reaction itself. Let's. This is the general reaction for a uh, metal and water. So metal plus water gives you a metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. Now, if we take that as an example, it will look like this. So lithium, which is a solid, plus the water, which is a liquid. So these are state symbols here. S for solid, L for liquid. It's going to give you lithium hydroxide which is going to be aqueous, so AQ, plus hydrogen, which is going to be a gas. Okay, this will change, this metal here changes depending on which metals in the reaction. So if this is sodium, that will be NaS plus H2OL gives you NaOH aqueous plus H2 gas. All you do is you just change the metal. And the half equation will be the same as I did on the previous slide where it is just lithium S gives you a lithium ion because you would remove everything apart from lithium and the electron and the electron that is lost.